Welcome to the Fit Girl Magic Podcast. If you are ready to find your inner magic, develop great habits, and a rock steady mindset to feel confident, comfortable, and fit in your body, you are in the right place. I am Kim Barnes Jefferson, and I'll be giving you weekly doses of health, fitness, and life tips sprinkled with humor and real talk. If you're ready to be consistent without the stress of perfection, magic makers, it's time to slip into your favorite pair of PJs, grab some coffee, kick back, and listen to today's show. All right, today's iTunes review of the week is brought to you by C. Hayes 77. I am so happy to have found this podcast. I look forward to listening to the new episode every week. I just finished the latest episode on lifting weights and loved it. I listened to it three times because it's so informative. I feel like I have a trainer in my ear when I listened and a friend to chat with along with the things I love, fitness. Ah, thank you so much, C. Hayes. That just fills my heart so full. So anyone else has a review, please absolutely share it with me. I love this and I appreciate every single review that I get. It just melts my heart that I am sharing the information that is going to be helpful for you to make sure that health and fitness is easy for you. Hey, Magic Makers, Kim here. I wanted to quickly pop in to this podcast and share with you about something that I've recently discovered. If you follow me on Instagram, you've been seeing my, what I call Movement Mondays, and every Monday I've been sharing with you some type of rehab, some type of corrective exercise that I've been doing to really help my shoulder that I injured back in June. And while the corrective exercises are awesome and I'm my shoulder starting to feel better, I want to share with you something else that I've been using. I have been using CBD cream. Now I know I was the same person. I was like, CBD, like, does that stuff really work? And let me just tell you, that stuff really works. It has been a game changer for me when it comes to just helping me just the the nagging ache that I used to have in my shoulders. And, you know, as I, as you know, I do my research. And so what I found is that CBD cream is what helps to reduce the inflammation caused from the the damage that I did to my rotator cuff. And it uses our, I'm going to try to pronounce this correct way. It uses our endocannabinoid system to really help us get into deep down into our nervous system to really help calm down those nerves. And let me tell you, I, you know, we could get all techie, all sciencey, but it has just been a game changer as far as really helping me rehab my shoulder. And I just can't talk about it enough. So if you're somebody who has been, you know, has nagging aches and pains, and you're looking for a little relief that you're not getting from the other products on the market, I got to tell you, the CBD cream that I've been using has just been a absolute game changer. Plus, it's not stinky, right? So I don't have to worry about, you know, wearing it during the day and and wondering, is someone going to be like, who is smelling like old man? That's not the case. So if you're interested in finding out more about CBD, do me a favor, click the link in today's show notes. Hey, Magic Makers, it's Kim here. And today I wanted to talk all about how do you manage your weight in your 40s? And I have five quick tips for you. So grab your pen and paper because we're going to come at you fast and furious. So the first place that I want to start is protein, right? I can't I can't stress this enough about how essential protein is for, for us. As, uh, as a woman over 40, but also just in general, right? You know, I do have some folks who listen that are under 40. Start getting into the habit now so that you don't feel like you're kind of always like chasing this goal. And so 
the big thing about protein, why is it so important? One, it helps ward off hunger, right? You know, um, two, it's really hard to overeat protein. I never heard anyone being like, I lost my stuff eating too much chicken, right? We've never, I've never heard that. And if you heard of someone who's like overeating chicken, please introduce me because they need to be a guest here on the podcast. Uh, also, it burns more calories when you eat uh, protein, you know, um, it's called the thermogenic effect of food, right? So our body has to, our body temperature has to raise up to digest um, protein. It's a little bit more complicated to digest protein than, you know, the simple carbohydrates. Uh, so that's that's what, what part of the reason. The second part of the reason is that as we age, we lose anywhere from three to 5% of our uh, muscle mass. And, you know, for many people, they think muscle turns to fat, but what you're actually seeing is that, you know, um, the muscle has no definition. So when a muscle has no definition, it looks like fat because it's, it's flabby, it's flimsy. Where if you're used to seeing, you know, muscle that has definition, so like, you know, say, look at a bicep, right? You're used to seeing when someone bends their elbow that there is, you know, a, a hill, a mound that pops up when you, you know, bring your fist up towards your shoulder. That is because there is muscle mass there. When we don't, and this is going to lead into the second part, second tip here, is that when we don't strength train, we lose that muscle mass. When we're not eating enough protein, we're not feeding our muscles the primary fuel that it likes to eat, <laughs> likes to use for muscle growth. Um, you know, most pe- most women, we need anywhere from 20 to 30 grams of protein every single meal. And so, you know, if you're someone who is, you know, a, a numbers person, it's 20 to 30 grams. If you're someone who's like, I don't like numbers, it is, think of it as, um, take a look at your palm and it's the size of your palm. So if you were to have, you know, three to four servings of your palm every single meal, then you are in the wheelhouse. All right. And, and uh, you know, a lot of people are surprised at how much protein, you know, actually does fill them up. You know, I, I had a, uh, a girl in my um, 30 day lean and sexy challenge. And, you know, I looked at her food log and in her food log, she wasn't eating enough. And one of the things she was eating enough protein. And so, and her, her energy was like in the crapper. And as soon as I bumped up her energy, bumped up her protein, she was like, Oh my God, like, just like someone turned the light switch on. Right. So that's how it, easy it is to just get back some energy is just to change the way we're eating. And so many of us want to find this, like, um, I don't know, this like magic door, this, like, you know, this like magic beans, if you will, that will magically transport our, uh, you know, body composition, our energy, all of that good stuff. And it was as simple as adding protein f- to her. And so how do you do this? First, you you have to make a plan, right? You know, because if you just like continue the way you're doing, you're just going to keep keep on keeping on. So make a plan, you know, map out like where, what are my big meals? Where can I put protein into those meals? You know, focus on the quality of that protein. You know, I'm not asking you to have like organic farm raised by virgins. No, I'm just asking that, you know, it's not saturated, it's not, not saturated fats, you know? So it's not like I'm having bacon with every meal or salami, right? You're having, you know, quality cuts of lower fat meat. Protein powder is fine, you know, except for one, one to two times a day. You know, I talked about the thermogenic effect of food and protein. Uh, so if you think about a protein powder, it's liquid. So I've already digested. It's already pre-digested, if you will. So my body doesn't have to work that hard to digest that, you know, and I get it. You know, we all have busy days and protein powder, you know, when I was uh, a personal trainer in the gym, protein powder was my best friend. It was the way I, I knew I could quickly and easily get in a great meal. And if you're someone who's asking for a quality protein powder, do me a favor, um, check, read, flip it over, read the labels. You want to make sure that it, it does not include artificial flavors, artificial colors, or soy. 
Okay. Those are the three things that you want to pay attention to when you are looking for quality protein powder. If you want suggestions, absolutely shoot me an email. I have no problem. Tag me on Instagram or DM me uh, on Facebook. I have no problem answering that question for you. But think about protein. It's four to five ounces of a chicken breast. It's a cup of cottage cheese or 12 ounces of Greek yogurt. It's five hard boiled eggs. Um, that's where you're going to find your protein. And, you know, a lot of people ask me, you know, Kim, do I need a pro post-workout protein boost? And if you're not getting three servings of protein that are 20 to 30 grams, let's not talk about that, right? You know, let's, let's crawl first. Let's focus on getting in those three uh, protein every day and then we can take it to the next level right you know it's kind of like let's do basic math before we start doing advanced calculus and for my vegetarians and vegans out there you need to be very mindful of your protein sources because every plant-based protein has a carb and so we want to make sure there's this you know this dance between having just enough carb and just having just enough protein right so um for women who work with me and who are vegans and vegetarians, here's where I challenge them to track macros for, you know, a couple of months until they get into the groove of like, what is the right ratios for them, right? You know, um, we can start with one ratio and we tweak, we tweak as we go through, as we go through just to see, you know, do you have enough energy? Are you hungry? Are you craving? And then we can decide what's going to work best for you in your life. Okay. So now it comes to the second point, strength training. Now, here's where I'm just going to throw it out there. And I've done a whole podcast on, you know, strength training over 40. You're not going to get bulky, right? I, I, I'm going to keep saying this until I stop seeing people post about being bulky. Unless you have some, you know, genetic disposition that you are, you know, there's some people out there in the bodybuilding world, it's called a hard gainer. Like you're someone who just like, boom, like you walk past the weight rack and like the weight, the muscles just jump on you, right? There are some ladies out there and God love you because I am one of them. There's some ladies out there who do that. But for the most part, many of us ladies, we got to fight. Like if we could put on like a pound of muscle, like every few months, we're just like, Wah! we love it. Right? So why is strength training important? It is the best way to boost your metabolism, right? It's a natural way to boost your metabolism. The more muscle I have in my body, the more calories I burn at rest. The more calories I burn at rest is the more calories I get to eat. And trust me, I'm a girl who likes my food. So that's why we want to strength train. We want to get that natural boost. Second way, reason why I want to strength train, as I mentioned, just a biological function of our bodies is that we lose muscle mass. So if you don't want the like, you know, floppy skin around, you got to lift, right? You got to lift. And I know some people will tell me, uh, the other reason before I go into that other segue, the other reason why you want to lift is that, you know, many of us have ins insulin sensitivity issues, right? So, the more muscle we have in our body, the more it helps us to regulate those insulin sensitivity issues. Also, it helps us to better balance our hormones, right? So I know many women come to me and they're like, oh, my hormones are crap, my hormones, right? So I'm going to say lift, lift some heavy weights so that we can really start to affect our, our entire metabolic system. With that said, people will say, Kim, I do yoga. I do bar. Great. If you love that, I'm not going to poo-poo it. However, I look at it as a supplement, right? It's a, you know, strength training for me is an aspirin. Like pure strength training is an aspirin. Bar yoga is a vitamin, okay? So if I have a headache, I'm taking an aspirin, not a, a vitamin. And the re this is why I say this. It's that yoga and bar can only get you butt so far, right? You know, many people are like, I feel the burn. What you're feeling is muscle fatigue, you know? So yoga and bar are great for mus like muscle endurance, 
you know, the ability to have your muscle under a, a bunch of tension, but there's only but so this but so much tension you can do with your body weight. Your body, so if you're a beginner, you can get beautiful results. You know, your your body weight can really help you along. However, there's going to come a tipping point where you just can't seem to make the gains. And how do I know that I've reached this tipping point? Is that if I were to say, take a picture of yourself every four weeks. And if you haven't changed in, you know, two of those pictures, then it's time to assess what you're doing for a workout, okay? What you're doing for a workout, but also assess what you're doing for food. So, you know, they, they go hand in hand. As Jack Lane says, nutrition is king. And, um, sorry, weight training is king. Nutrition is queen, okay? So, you know, the nutrition will always be the main driver before the workout is the driver. So when it comes to strength training, we this is the four places that, that we look. We look at frequency. How often are you training? And for my, for my clients, I challenge them to work out anywhere from three to five days a week. What is the volume of the workout? Like how many sets and how many reps are in those sets that you're doing? The intensity, right? So am I lifting heavy weights? And I know here we are in Rona times. And so we might be challenged to the, the, um, the number of weights that we have in, you know, in our home. We might not be going to the gym, all of that good stuff. So this is where I'm like, okay, if you can't increase the weight, we're going to also fool around with tempo, right? We're going to fool around with um, arm position to change the intensity of the workout if we aren't able to increase the rep count. Oh, sorry, increase the physical weight. And then um, fatigue, right? Time to failure. So it's not like, you know, in, you know, bar, you're doing like 30 reps. Like this is like, you know, anywhere from five, you know, three to five reps to like 12 to 15 reps. Like, you know, we're doing this kind of periodization um, is the best approach if you're looking to build muscle where sometimes it's pure strength. Sometimes it's, you know, muscle building. Sometimes it's just maintenance, right? So we're always challenging our muscles in different rep counts, different sets, you know, just something to always keep the body guessing. And the the, the piece that I want to drive home here is that cardio is a nice to have, right? So it's a, it's we want to sprinkle cardio in. Cardio is like a two to three day. Um, I'm I'm laughing because I'm sprinkling my fingers. Uh, cardio is like a two to three day thing, and it's somewhere like you know thirty minutes, you know twenty to thirty minutes, maybe ten to ten to thirty minutes, depending on how much time you have in your workout. And it can be something that's a low intensity thing or it can actually be a hit thing. It really, you know, when I when I program cardio, I really look at what's going on in my my client's life. If my client is a stress ball, the last thing that she needs to be doing is a hit workout, right? She needs something a little more low key, something to calm down her nervous system. And I would recommend a walk. Versus, you know, going to like, you know, a kickboxing class. So think about, you know, what's going on in your life. And, you know, I know for many people, you know, we have those people who are the, I call them cardio queens. Like, you know, you put them on a piece of equipment and they could be there till the cows come home. And then I have other people that, that fist fight, you know, to do cardio. And so, you know, one of the things about cardio is that it doesn't have to necessarily happen on a piece of equipment. You know, there's kettlebells, there's jump ropes, there's, you know, for those of you who like running, running, um, you know, I like sprinting up and down my driveway. My neighbors think of cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, but you know, it's good. It has its purposes. All right. The third place, monitor our carb intake. Now, please note, I said monitor. I didn't say stop eating carbs. Carbs are the devil. Carbs need to go blah, 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 blah. I said, yes, carbs are necessary, but we all have a tipping point, right? And so I've heard carbs counted as grams, bites, servings, you know, and the one thing I always challenge my clients is that we need to start, have a baseline. So in order to have a baseline, I need to know where you are. Now, some basically tracking your food. And I just did a podcast about um, some tips to track your food. And I know tracking your food sucks, right? There's no, it's, it's never going to be something that people are like, hey, Kim, can I track my food? Like, no one's going to volunteer that. But it's what helps for two things, two reasons why I 
I ask for you to track food and why most coaches ask you to track food. One, we want to understand what's happening. Tracking your food gives us a baseline to understand, you know, what are you doing? You know, how much are you eating? Are you eating at certain times? Are you, what certain things are you eating? So that way we can kind of start to see where we need to tweak. And so one of the places that, you know, most people, um, most people, you know, they'll like, in, uh, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 years ago, you know, the whole low carb, no carb, fat free, excuse me, low carb, no carb, fat free was like the, the rage. And so, and then we learned that like, you know what, we need carbs. Carbs give us energy, right? And for those of us who are, you know, active at the gym or just act very active in life, those carbs are absolutely positively necessary. And so I know that, you know, this whole keto thing is a big thing. And people are like, ah, oh, I'm losing like 10, 15 pounds to start off. Well, here's why. Carbs chase water. And so what does that mean in English? So the less carbs I have, the less water I'm retaining. And so the less water I'm retaining, my kidneys are like, oh, my body doesn't need this. So my kidneys start to release the excess water. So I can, so on the scale, I could easily, you know, sometimes lose five to 10 pounds the first month. And I'm like, this is fabulous. Have your first, you know, piece of carb boom, that scale is going to go right back up, okay? So um, here's where I ask my clients to track, track their food, track check your food five days and see where your carbs fall, you know? And we could see if there's a too, much, too much, not enough, you know, we'll ask how you feel. You know, the, always the question I always ask are, are you hungry? How's your energy? Are you craving? Because those three things will be, are very telling as to what's going on with your diet and your exercise. Um, so, you know, for someone who is like, oh, they're like, oh, what should I aim for for carbs? Well, what I typically, you know, once I see what people are eating, I will adjust and I say, let's start here. And it's typically starting anywhere from 100 to 150 grams, all right? 100, 100 to 150 grams of carbs. And let's see how you feel. How are you doing? Because that way I know, are you hungry? How's your energy? How's, how's your cravings? And I know that some of you, you know, who are listening might be a little more advanced and they're like, hey, Kim, what about carb cycling? Well, here's my, my big push back on that. Let's get consistent before we start moving on to kind of uh, um, bigger things, bigger rocks, right? This is a big rock right here. This right here is, um, I remember when I was like very, it was like a stress ball. And I remember I, my doctor recommended me, I read this book, don't, don't, don't sweat the small stuff. Excuse me, don't sweat the small stuff. And this wondering if you should carb cycle that's the small stuff right the big stuff is how many how much protein am i getting how much carbs am i getting let's sweat that get that good then we can move on to some of the you know advanced calculus if you will all right and the beauty about carbs is that there's plenty of fruits and vegetables that are very filling that you can eat and not feel like you know you're overdoing it it's the processed stuff that the processed carbs that really um take us over the edge the fourth place that the fourth oh actually i'm skipping ahead the third tip is movement now this one is i think shocking for a lot of people because many people want to go to the gym and just crush it and kill it well if you think about the gym it's only maybe like 20 percent of our day where the bulk of our days are spent sitting at our desk at work or watching our kids play whatever sport it is or game that it, whatever it is. So here's some numbers for you. So we're awake roughly 15 and a half hours. And out of that, the average person exercises 15 minutes, sorry, 18 minutes a day. So we have plenty of other pockets in our day to fit in movement. And so what the kind of technical term is, is called non-exercise activity thermogenesis. What? That is just acts of daily living. And I remember when I first started um, in this business, um, the trainer at the time that I was working with, I said, oh, um, 
he said, I said, Oh, he's like, Oh, I want you to do an X number of days of cardio. And I was like, well, I'm like, actually, you know, I walk to the bus stop um, a half mile every day and, you know, it's a half mile to the bus. And then it's another quarter mile to my job. So that I'm roughly walking, you know, three, four miles a day, you know, outside of all the walking that I'm doing in and around the gym. I was like, that doesn't count. Now, doing all the math, we realize it, it counts even more so than what I actually did for the hour of like, you know, focused exercise. It's that our bodies are, have been meant to move. And it wasn't until, you know, the early, you know, 30s, 40s, when the industrial res- revolution came around and we went from more of a um, farming society to a more industrial society that like, you know, we've started to see the obesity rates go up because people aren't, you know, we're, we're driving places, you know, we're driving the quarter mile versus walking to the store or walking to a friend's house. Like we're picking up the phone, the texting and doing all the things versus actually moving our bodies. And so we live a more sedentary life. Now, I know that many of you are like, well, I go for a walk and I do hand weights and ankle weights. Please stop. You are not adding anything more to your calorie burn. When you put those ankle weights on, if you have any type of um, mobility issues from your hips to your knees, to your ankles, those ankle weights are just going to exacerbate it. Um, pelvic issues. So take the weights off of those ankles. Second, hand weights. Same thing. If I'm walking with hand weights, same thing. Shoulders, elbows, it's all going to cause other issues because I need to have perfect, perfect posture in order to make all of that work. And so instead of saying, oh, I'm going to tone my arms by carrying those two pound weights, save yourself the trouble, come home and do an actual strength training workout. Okay. Um, the other reason why I like walking is for two reasons. One, walking is sustainable, right? Everyone can walk. Second, walking is a great place to start. If you're someone who hasn't exercised or hasn't exercised in a while, and you're like, I, I don't know where to turn, or you're a mommy. You know, I have plenty of mommies who, you know, their kids are playing sports or have, you know, uh, music lessons or, you know, all sorts of, you know, appointments, they can go for a walk while they're waiting for, you know, little Bobby to be done with their activity, right? Go for a 10, 15, 20 minute walk. You know, most of you are just sitting in the car or sitting in the waiting room, reading a book and, you know, ask if it's okay. Like, Hey, can I go for a quick 15 minute walk? Most people will say yes, right? It's, it's no one's going to say, no, you must sit in the waiting room for it to tears while I do whatever I am doing to your kid. Okay. So that's one of the things that I, I like about walking. So now here's the fourth. Here's the fourth reason, my friends. The fourth reason here is, uh, the fourth reason here is alcohol. Okay. The fourth tip here. Now, I'm never going to be that coach to tell you, stop drinking. In fact, I've written an entire alcohol guide. So you can, um, in the show notes, I will attach the link to it. So I'm never going to tell you, um, don't drinking. However, maybe um, alcohol has become this kind of escape for many people. Um, Alcohol is the, you know, mommy juice, right? And so for some people who can't, have a day without alcohol you know they have the whole you know dry january kind of thing um you know i remember i had good friends every year for the month of february because february had 28 days um they would they would go on the wagon pretty much from um the middle of february through saint patrick's day and that's when they would come off of the wagon so if the thought of something like that you can't really think about doing that I want you to listen to a podcast that I, I did um, a few months ago, and it's called Questioning Your Relationship with Alcohol, just to see how you're doing. I'm not saying anyone needs to. I'm just saying it's a good check-in for you. Um, so he, here's the thing about alcohol, right? We have to watch our intake. It, it's it's empty calories, despite what people say. Oh, red wine, blah, 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 blah. malarkey, BS. So watch your intake. 
right? Because it does, it's just empty calories. It doesn't have any medicinal um, properties to it at all. The other thing, you know, while initially alcohol makes us relax, on the other side, it's very disruptive for our sleep. It's disruptive for our hormones. Um, and for some people, alcohol, you know, chips away at their, you know, decision-making properties, right? So they might be going out to dinner and, you know, after one glass of wine, they can be like, yep, I'm going to make healthy choices. After two glasses of wine, they're like, bring on the jalapeno poppers, right? Then the nachos. And then, you know, the next day you wake up and you're just like, oh, what just happened? Right? So start to think about what does alcohol do for you? Um, And alcohol enhances belly fat. So if you're someone who's like, I'm trying to lose this belly, let's look at what we're we're drinking. But like I said, I've um, created a whole uh, guide that walks through alcohol. So if you're interested in how do you like blend in alcohol into a weight loss program, grab that. Oops, sorry about that. Grab that guide. It will definitely give you what you are looking for. And the fifth and final is hormones, okay? So, so many people like, you know, you hit 40, like, ah, my hormones. And so I'm just destined. I'm just destined. And I'm like, no, once you hit 40, you're not destined. You can easily set yourself up for success, but you're not destined to have this hormonal nightmare, right? And so here's where people, but and, and, you know, putting on weight when you're over 40 isn't always 100% your um, hormones, okay? And I can say this because I put on 30 pounds in three years. So I totally know exactly that feeling. And here's where I always start my clients. And I just did a podcast on this all about hormones as well. But here's where I start start with my clients. Before we even go down that hormonal path, um, one, check your diet, right? Your diet might need to be cleaned up. You know, you might be overeating. And what was happening for me, I was overeating. I was overeating healthy food. Yeah, healthy food. I was overeating. So that was one. I had to start to eat when I was hungry versus eating on a schedule that I had been eating on a schedule for 15 years. Second, lifting, right? I had to really go in and be so focused on my lips. I still was having, and I had to have rest days. I wasn't having rest days. I've had to put in two physical rest days where the only thing I did was go for a walk, not a power walk, a stroll, okay? Three, sleeping. My sleep was crap. And so now my sleep is my priority. I like fist fight to get seven plus hours of sleep a night. Because I know when I don't get seven plus hours of sleep a night, I become a hungry, hungry hippo, okay? Fourth, I told you I was a stress ball. And it's so funny. A lot of people don't think of me as a stress ball, but I used to be a stress ball. I was stressed about every little thing under the sun. And that caused, you know, my cortisol levels to go up. That caused my adrenals to go up. It just was like a whole, like, you know, hormone storm. And I had to manage my stress. Okay. Now, if all of those things are like, girl, you know, my food can't get any cleaner. I can't lift any harder. I'm sleeping like a rock star. Stress. I don't even know what that is. Awesome. Okay. And you still feel like you're putting a weight and there's still a hormonal problem. Okay, great. Now we can go down that path of, of change. Now we can find a, and here's where I challenge you, your traditional doctor, your general partner, your general practitioner, she and or he, they I gotta be, you know, that political correctness, they might not know all the things. Because when I first went to my general practitioner, she only tested one level of my thyroid versus testing all the varying levels of my thyroid that my functional doctor tested. And so if you truly feel like you have hormonal issues, I challenge you to go find a functional um, uh, doctor so that they they test a different variety of things. The other test that they use is the Dutch test. And that was very, um, 
eye-opening for me. Uh, And lastly, I had some gut issues that I had to heal up. And once I was able to like heal up my gut issues, you know, manage my hormones, now my numbers are like rock star. That took me four years to get here. Okay. Let me repeat that. It took me four years to get here. Now it's Now I can focus on my food and my exercise and knowing that it's my food and my exercise that's going to push me back to where I want to be, okay? So that is what I got for you today. You know, those are the five tips I have for you for managing your weight over 40. Protein, strength training, hormones, carbs, and I think I left something out. Hang on. And uh, let's let's do that all over again. We got protein. We got strength training. We got carbs. Movement and alcohol and hormones. All right. So all of the things that I have posted are in the all the podcasts and uh guys that I've talked about are going to be in the show notes. Again, if you have any questions or comments, absolutely. You know where to find me. You can find me on the socials, Kim Jefferson Coach. Shoot me a DM, tag me. Be sure to share this with any of your lovely ladies who are over 40 and they need a little little boost, a little pick-me-up because they're just feeling a little frumpy. We do not have to be frumpy, girlfriends. All right. Have a fabulous evening and I will talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to the Fit Girl Magic Podcast. If you've made it this far, yay. I'm thinking you enjoyed the show. Let's continue the conversation on Instagram. You can find me at Kim Jefferson Coach. In order for me to keep sharing this message, do me a favor and leave me a five-star review on iTunes. While you're there, don't forget to subscribe so that you won't miss an episode. New episodes are available every Wednesday. The Fit Girl Magic Podcast is intended to provide you with tips, tools, and strategies that will help you make better decisions about your health. I really appreciate your feedback and your support. Thank you so much.